What's the creepiest thing that's ever happened to you? I was changing in my room when I was 16 and saw a flash in my window. Thought nothing of it until I realized it wasn't raining. A week or so later, I woke up to the unmistakable sound of breathing at my window when I called out I could hear them running and jumping over my gate. Thought maybe I was just crazy until my mom confirmed she had also heard weird noises from the backyard. We moved a month later. To this day, I am not sure who it was. I was walking in the dark on a side street in Austin, Texas. A homeless woman walked up behind me. I didn't see her coming and started whispering in a very low voice, I want to scratch your back. I want to scratch your back, scratch, scratch, scratch. And then suddenly touched the back of my neck. I almost threw myself into traffic to get away from her. I worked as a park ranger for a few summers. It was a great job, but the downside was dealing with the public. I have tons of crazy stories, but only one extremely creepy story. I was scheduled to close the park one night with another girl. The park opened at dawn and closed at dusk. The closing duties were to drive around and make sure everyone was out of the park, then close the gates. You had to make sure everyone was out or else they would get locked inside. Kristen and I got into a truck together to check the day use picnic area, both campgrounds and all bathrooms. When we left the upper lot, there were no cars in the parking lot of the ranger station. Important later, we cruised around, checked all areas. All was good, so we drove back up to the gate and ranger station to close up. I got out to close the gate and jumped back into the truck. Kristen pointed out that while we were gone, a jeep had parked in the parking lot. We thought this was super weird since we hadn't seen anyone park there earlier, but whatever. We parked the truck a couple spots away from the jeep and got out. We figured we'd just tell the person to leave and then we could go home. As we approached the vehicle, we could barely see someone sitting in the driver's seat. We had dim street lamps, so we knew someone was in there. I waved, got no response. No movement. Kristen knocked on the window, the person didn't respond. We both started feeling like something was wrong. I got chills standing there and we both stepped away from the jeep, alarmed at the lack of response. We both decided to go get our boss, who lived across the street on site. We weren't supposed to bother him at night, but this was too weird. He got his shoes on and walked over with us. As we were crossing the street, we saw the door to the jeep slowly open. Then all three of us saw a figure creep out of the vehicle and crawl underneath. All we saw was a shadow, since there wasn't a lot of light. All of us were scared shitless. It was something out of a horror movie. Kristen got on the phone with the police while my boss and I slowly approached the vehicle. My boss told the person they needed to leave and that we were calling the cops. We could see someone sitting under the lifted jeep, near the front tires. The person wasn't moving or responding. Once the police showed up, they were visibly freaked out too. They had guns drawn and everything. It turned out to be some person tripping on meth. We had no idea why they showed up at the park or what they were doing there, but the cops did find drugs and a loaded gun in the vehicle. After that night, my boss changed all policies regarding closing duties. He added extra closers and we had to carry maids. It was truly terrifying to witness someone creep out of their car and scramble like an animal underneath. It was like she was possessed. I feel like this is less creepy and more scary slash dangerous. I was in bed in my apartment with a girl I started dating. I hear gunshots, incredibly loud, very close. I tell her to get away from the window and roll out of bed, completely naked, grabbing my rifle and laid down below the window. Like I'm going to engage in a shootout or something. I'm an idiot. Time passes. And I see the light from two flashlights against the window. Not sure if it's police or someone else, I still waited, still naked, listening. Eventually, I can tell it's the police. I wrap myself in a blanket and go out on the balcony to talk to them. They told me the shots hit the wall maybe a foot away from going through my window. My bed wasn't right next to the window, so not really dangerous. But creepy. Another night, same complex, I was going for a jog around the outside of the complex and I was coming around the front entrance. The complex had one of those islands out front where there's an area with a patch of grass, the sign for the complex, some bushes and a light post. It's dark and the light is on and only illuminating the area right below it. As I'm coming around the front I see a dark silhouette of a man shambling down the street like a zombie toward the light post and toward me. Hunched weirdly, limping, dragging his leg kinda. My instinct is to run but before I do, I see him step into the light and it's just a black guy with a puffy coat on that's hanging off his shoulders around his back with no shirt underneath. Obviously, not a zombie, but looked cracked out of his head. So that makes me panic even more. I feel the impulse to break out into a full sprint, but then, in the back of my mind, I didn't want to look racist. Like oh no! Black guy! Run! Maybe he'll get offended. Also, 
I was exhausted from the run. So I still sprinted, but tried to make it look like I was still exercising. Like keeping good pace, posture, good arm movement etc. I took the side door instead of the main gate. The door is broken and won't lock. I hear the door close behind me and then hear it open a moment later, he's right behind me. Then I just full on panic run up two flights of stairs into my apartment. Again, I'm not a smart man. This was years ago, but something about the moment scared the hell out of me and I thought I'd share. I was 16 and living in Chicago in the infamous South Shore neighborhood. We lived in a basement apartment, aka garden apartment. My mom was sick and was begging me to go to the store a block away to get an Arizona iced tea for her. She gave me the money and I left no problems. The owner of the store knew me and my mom and would watch out for me, plus I knew how to handle myself if things got violent. Well, this man, I'm guessing somewhere between 25 to 30, begins following me at the corner of my house. I try to brush it off and hurry to the store. He comes in and follows me throughout the aisles. Eventually, as I'm grabbing the drink from the fridge, he offers to buy it for me. I refuse telling him I can do it on my own. He doubles down and offers me $60 in food stamps on the condition I have sex with him in his car outside. If you don't know street currency, that's 30 US dollars cash. I refuse and tell him I'm only 16 years old thinking it would scare him off. He then offers me $100 in food stamps. I tell him there's no way and make sure to chat up the store owner and ask him to call my mom for me to tell her I got what she wanted. That way this guy would know that the owner knew me and that someone was home with me. Rushed home and told my mom about the interaction and she didn't send me out alone anymore. Should be the end of it, right? Well, jump to a week later. I'm in bed and burning hot. Normally, I'd take off my clothes and head back to bed. But this time something felt off. I turn on the bedside lamp and I see the same man laying on his side to look through the tiny basement windows right at me. He was jerking himself off. I screamed and my mom ran into my room as he was getting up to run off. Thankfully my mom was fed up with the place anyways and we moved the next week into a hotel while we searched for a new apartment. Definitely scary. I've, F22, been followed out by the gas attendant who cornered me to ask me out then got mad when I said no, only backed off when I lied and said we were engaged. I've recently been pumping gas and an older man has walked up and said I was doing it wrong and wrapped his arms around me, think first date mini golfing type position, to show me how to pump gas aka instead of putting the stopper on the handle to hold it the whole time. I froze in fear before I told him to back off and that I was COVID positive, he backed off. I hate pumping gas. When I was 8 years old my mom got hit by a 15 year old joy riding and running a red light. 85 miles per hour right into her driver's side door. 10 months in the hospital, 2 years until she could use her hands again, 5 years until she could work again. A month or two into her hospital stay her lottery numbers hit for 6 or 9 million, I can't remember. The numbers, made from my sibling's birthdays, that she played every week. She saw it on TV but saved the newspaper clipping of them winning, a shrine to remind her of what could have been. It's all she would talk about when I visited her. She used to always smile, laugh, embrace. But she changed. Even the way she talked about the world, just got darker, angrier. It's like her soul died and nobody was home. Fake smiles, distant stares, no more hugs, gone. One night at around 10 or 11 p.m., I was in the kitchen getting a late night snack when suddenly the doorbell rang. I answered it and this panicked woman was there telling me how she had had a fight with her mom and asked me to call a taxi for her at the top of the road and she'd wait there for it. After the taxi had been called and she left, I got a call from the taxi company to say that the driver hadn't seen anyone. I then saw the woman ringing my neighbor's doorbell and asking the same of them. To this day, I still have no idea what the hell was happening or where a goal could possibly have been. Creepiest thing that has happened to my roommate happened while I was asleep. He was coming back to our room to go to bed when he heard me yell something like please, no, stop, from the other side of the door. And then silence. And then footsteps approaching the door. He bolted, was almost out the door when he realized I was just getting up to pee. I apparently woke myself up sleep talking. He legitimately thought I had been murdered and was trying to escape. I still sleep talk all the time apparently. The creepiest thing I said to my wife in the middle of the night, unprompted, was who's whispering. Oh no. You reminded me of the time my roommate got pulled out of the bed. We watched a horror movie that night. I think it was The Ring, but it's been years. We had bunk beds because we were in a dorm, and not long after we went to bed, I heard Slash felt her slide halfway off the bed like someone had pulled her legs. She sat up and asked me if I was awake. I just had a nightmare, she said, that somebody grabbed my legs and pulled me off the bed. I am still not sure how she slid off the bed like that, but there was no one there and nothing terrible happened. 
It was creepy, though. It was the middle of the night, and I was getting ready for bed in my bathroom when I heard something crazy. I heard the howling of a coyote inside my house. We lived in the country so coyotes were common but never inside. I froze up in fear and forced myself to peer around the corner to see over the stairway. My cat was standing in front of the window mimicking the howl of a coyote. I could not believe what I was hearing. When he saw me watching him he stopped. He's never made that sound ever again and honestly it's terrifying that cats are capable of things like this. But yeah I was scared to death, I thought there was a coyote in my house. When my brother and I were about 7 years old, we found a pair of scissors in the kitchen drawer and thought it wouldn't be a bad idea to cut the hedges out the front with them. Well aware now that it wasn't a great idea, nevertheless, our mother wasn't aware we were doing this, and whilst being outside and cutting hedges we were questioned by a grown male in a silver SUV. He asked us if we needed help with the hedges and if our parents were home. Before we clearly got an answer out he started opening his door, we both went inside to tell our mother there was a man out front asking now about. She came out with us and he was gone. Thought nothing of it. About a few weeks went by and that car was on the news and had been seen attempting to abduct kids from the local school. Now that I'm 22, it creeps me out a bit. When I was a little girl I was getting ready for school one day early in the morning. It was really foggy outside and the house was empty. It was so surreal and something felt wrong so I went out into our pasture to find my parents. I grew up on a farm, and I remember seeing one of our goats lying on the ground through the fog. I found my dad through the fog and ran up behind him. I remember him seeming really stressed and mad at what I thought was me. My mom found the two of us and ran me inside the house. She told me to not go outside again and later said that the reason they were outside was because some of our neighbor's dogs snuck over to our property and was attacking our goats, killing a few. Our dogs were never violent so they just barked at the neighbor's dogs instead of attacking them. Apparently the reason my dad was so stressed was because he was trying to track down the neighbor's dogs, was on high alert, had a loaded gun, and I ran up behind him like an idiot and was running around a pasture unattended with two violent dogs. This definitely isn't the scariest story on this post, but it kinda concerns me how dangerous that situation was. It wasn't me it happened to, however I did witness it. I was about 11 at the time and we lived in a house that had strange things happen all the time. Nothing like crazy. Little things like bumps in the night and stuff being where you didn't leave it. I remember it was around Halloween. We were buying stuff for a party at the end of the month and my mom bought some rubber mask. My little brother grabbed one and it was a typical red devil mask. We had an attic and we always kept it closed. This day my brother who was two or three at the time was running around with the mask on. He was laughing and stuff and out of nowhere he just goes silent. My mom and I get concerned because he was quiet for a few minutes and we see him in the hallway. Staring straight up at the open attic. My mom calls out to him and he doesn't respond or acknowledge her. It was like he was in a trance. My mom pulls him away from the attic's opening and he starts laughing again like nothing happened. What made it more creepy was he had tears in his eyes when we took the mask off. I used to work in retail in a clothing store and one day I was serving, but I'd forgotten my name badge so it'd been lent one by a friend who was finishing their shift. A girl I was serving was being overly friendly, didn't really think much of it and left it at that. Went on my break a few hours later and had a Facebook friend request from the girl and about 15 message requests which started at high and finished at asking why I was ignoring her etc etc and whether or not she needed to come back to the store to speak to me properly. Still freaks me out to this day that she found me on Facebook with no mutual friends and my place of work wasn't listed, which is why I now don't have Facebook. Extremely creepy fake cop slash road rage encounter. This was 2010 in rural PA. After an incident on the road, two guys in a truck blocked me into a parking spot and turned on a siren and lights. The driver came up to my window and started screaming at me about how he is a police officer and army ranger or something. He made a motion to his hip implying he had a gun and waved a set of handcuffs in my window saying I was going to be detained. I decided to just stay in my car and call police. Luckily, they eventually left and I found out later the guy had a habit of using his fake siren and police lights to pull over women occasionally assault them. He even scanned some folks by giving them scuba lessons, having them pay up front then just bouncing while they were 30 feet underwater. Dude was a creep and I would hate to know what would have happened if I had gotten out of that car. When I was in middle school 13 to 14, I took the public bus home and this guy got off the same stop as me and was walking the same direction as me but just a bit behind me and I didn't take notice until I turned onto my street and he turned as well. I live down the street from a middle school so there's many cross guards and I walked up to one and asked if I could use their phone to call my mom because I was scared of going to an empty house and this guy following me. I called and told my mom and the cross guard told her that I could stay with him until he could give me a ride down to my house. He told me that he sees that guy a lot walking down the street we turn off but that he never comes down my street, he was very worried. 
I thought it might have been my imagination if it weren't for that kind man totally confirming that the guy was following me and then taking me home. When my friend and I were still in college, we made a couple of fake Facebook accounts pretending to be famous literary characters for a group project. After we graduated, we never deleted the accounts and since it was just me and her who could access them, I would occasionally use them to dump info into. Like I'd see a fun meme to show a friend, so I'd send it as a message to one of the fake accounts, and then later I could just log into that account and have a whole list of stuff saved conveniently in the chat. I'd also occasionally post literary memes from that account just for fun because a good number of our old classmates were still Facebook friends with them and they always got a kick out of it. Well, my friend worked at a soup kitchen at the time, and had recently taken under her wing this guy who'd just been released from prison for murdering his entire family. She was trying to help him readjust to society and get a handle on how drastically the world had changed since he'd been in prison. He wasn't supposed to have any access to social media as part of his parole or something, it the details, but for some reason my friend was like, I'll just ignore that and let him use one of the fake accounts so he could have a Facebook and learn about social media. So one day I get a message from the account, responding to some meme I had sent over or something and I assume it's my friend. Because we're the only two people who have access to the account, right? Wrong. It's a 40-year-old man who murdered his mother, little brother, and baby sister in cold blood. It didn't take me long to figure out it was not my friend on the other end of the chat, because the guy quickly went from laughing over the meme to telling me how hot I was and how he hadn't had sex in ages, because of prison, and I put two and two together and called my friend who'd been telling me about this guy and her job and all that, and was like, WTF, why does he have access to this account? And she came clean and was embarrassed and apologized and said she'd changed the password, which she did. But she kinda brushed over the fact that she'd allowed a known and convinced murderer access to my name and photo. Ick if this is the most creepy thing that's ever happened to me, but that one moment of cold realization that it was not my friend on the other end of the chat and instead a murderer who now knows my name and face has kept me up at night. I worked late, and I went to my car at 3 o'clock in the morning. This huge guy, who had at least 50 pounds on me and over was a foot taller than me, started walking towards me, in the parking lot, yelling H-U-Y, H-U-Y. The whole place was empty. I told him I don't have any cash. He still kept walking towards me. I realized he is going to get near me before I can get to my car, so I took out my stun gun and told him to stay where he is. He still walked towards me until I removed the safety and pressed the button. He saw the sparks and backed off. He was like 10 feet from me when that happened. As I got into my car, he kept saying all I wanted was some money for food. Yeah, right. There was no restaurant, fast food place, or even a gas station with food, open near a 3 mile radius at that time. Edit, changed to 50 pounds on me. I was too young to 100% understand what was going on, but my mom's told the story often enough I may as well have. I live in the city and my parents' backyard is about 30 by 20 feet, and at the back by the house there's a section of the roof overlapping the door with a little space so there's some shade. My dad put a sandbox in that extra space for my sister and I when we were about 6 and 4. There was a big window in the living room so they could watch over us too. One afternoon my sister and I were playing in the sandbox that day and my mom had been in the house relaxing while we did our thing when there was a guy that walked by on the sidewalk and glanced over us. It was pretty normal, nothing to cause alarm. He kept walking on and we kept with whatever we were doing. Some 10 to 15 minutes later a tan car rolls up and the same guy steps out of the car. He propped himself on our fence and called us asking if we wanted one of his chocolate bars. He had my sister's attention, but my mom always preached don't talk to strangers more than using please and thank you. I'd sat her back down with me then I got up and started back to the living room to tell my mom where she whispered to me to look at his license plate. I guess the guy saw me walking the wrong direction to talk to someone and glancing back because he hopped back in his car and sped off. My mom says we never saw or heard from the guy again, but the situation was really eerie. I hate to think he'd tried again with someone else. What about you? Tell us your story in comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Right now, 